Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 29th lecture on economics, management and entrepreneurship. We had started discussion on management in the last lecture. In that lecture, we had talked about the beginning of the management as a science or as a scientific discipline. We had discussed about the major contributions by three outstanding personalities in the field of management, Taylor, Mayo and Fair. Today, we shall discuss about functions of management. Recall that Fair was the first person who said that management is universal and that the functions of management are generic in nature. By that we mean that the functions can be categorized in different, different ways and today we shall discuss about different categories of functions or different functions and then discuss them in some detail. Today's topic is therefore, functions of management. There are many ways in which uh, management functions are uh, categorized. I am sorry there is a mistake here. Planning, organizing, yes. Yes. Two popular ways. One is this planning, organizing and coordinating, directing and motivating and controlling. The other way is planning, organizing, staffing, leading and controlling. And here, staffing is not included as a separate function of management, but in this classification, staffing is included. And directing and motivating together is called leading here, whereas organizing and coordinating is called organizing only here. So, although these two ways of classification of functions of management look different, they are really not very different. It is a question of giving different names to different groups of functions. Now, we study each one separately. Planning is the process of setting long and short term goals, selecting actions to achieve them and making decisions. So, basically planning is to select 
long term and short term goals. Some authors say that long term goals that are short term are objectives. So, they say long term goals and short term objectives. Some authors say that objectives are long term and goals are short term. So, whether it is long term goals or long term objectives does not matter, we should understand the context in which the reference is made. Basically, planning is setting the goals and then selecting actions to achieve them and then making decisions. You can say look at this there are some examples that I am giving. Planning is required when a company wishes to expand its activities by setting up new production units. So, you can see that in this particular example the decision will be taken by the top management of the company. It is a question of setting up a new production unit large amount of investment would be required to set up a new production unit. This calls for heavy planning come to a soft floor level the second example a maintenance engineer wishes to carry out a repair there also a planning is required. So, this is at the soft floor level the operating management level, but both require planning at the top level it is a high level planning heavy planning, long term commitment and at the soft floor level it is probably planning for a day or two. The former is an example of a long term plan, the latter a short term plan, but both require plan. Now, we talk about organizing. Organizing is the rational grouping of enterprise activities for assigning them to departments, groups and individuals. So, it is the enterprise activities that are grouped in some way and are assigned to departments, groups or individuals that is organizing. So, the marketing activities are given to a group or to a department or to a division. So, that is the way it has been rationally grouped. Similarly, production activities can be put together and assigned to a particular division or a department and similarly finance or human resources. So, these activities are grouped in a rational way and then they are assigned to particular department, division or groups or even individuals. Delegating the requisite amount of authority to managers, every department has got certain manager and each manager will have some other subordinates to work with him. So, proper authority must be delegated to each one of them and each person should know what he or she is authorized to do. It is also establishing a system of manager to manager relationship. It is just not that there is a hierarchical relationship that there is a subordinate and a super and superior juniors senior relationship, 
but it could be a horizontal relationship between manager of one department and the manager of another department. So, this relationship must be properly established and the activities must be coordinated. All this is called organizing, grouping the enterprise activities and assigning them to different units, delegating the requisite amount of authority, establishing horizontal relationships as well as vertical relationships and coordinating their activities. Normally, the formal way by which the organizing is done is called the organization structure. In fact, in our next lecture, we shall talk about organization structure in more detail. Now, every manager has got certain roles to fulfill. So, roles emphasize that a person has a definite purpose or a goal, he or she knows how his or her job fits into the group effort, has the necessary authority, tools and information to accomplish the task. Such a structure provides the static aspects or the anatomy of an organization behavior. This is about the organization structure, which is the static aspect of an organization. Next, we talk about staffing, although staffing is sometimes omitted as part of the management functions, but it is quite important that the right as Taylor had said, the best person must be employed and be given the training to excel in his or her work. Staffing involves filling and keeping filled the positions in the organization structure. Sorry, this would be positions. So, the vacant positions must be filled and they must be continued to be filled, so that the work is carried on. Now, this is done by identifying the workforce requirement, what exactly is to be done and how many workers are required to be recruited depending on the workload, they can be estimated then finding out how many people of that particular skill you have that is called inventory, inventorying the available people, how many people, how many employees are available and what are their skill level and then only finding out the difference between what is desired and what you actually have, you recruit, select, place them in proper place and then when they are employed you also think of their promotions, you also say how they are doing in their performance, this is performance appraisal, planning for their careers, compensating the wage incentive plans and training the employees. So, this is all coming under staffing function. So, staffing function involves filling up the vacant posts and then also thinking about how they should be utilized in their work and how they will prosper, how they will give or contribute maximum to the organization's effectiveness. Next, directing. Directing is the process of communicating, leading, motivating and supervising the activities of individuals, so that the goals are achieved. Now, this is the dynamic aspect, whereas organizing 
talks about organization structure, which is the static aspect of an organization that says which activities are grouped together and assigned to which people, what is the amount of authority that is passed on, who would report to whom, these are almost defined in an organization structure, but it is the directing function that is the dynamic aspect of management. Here one talks about communicating formally and informally, leading from the top, motivating the people and then supervising and taking appraisal of the work that people are doing, so that the goals are achieved. Now, let us talk about particularly leading leadership quality is a very important topic, but we are only giving a cursory discussion on this. Leading often considered as a separate function of management basically indicates the total manner by which a manager influences the actions of subordinates how the subordinates actions are influenced is a function of the leadership quality. And the important aspects of leadership are to be able to communicate properly, to motivate them and to inspire them and improve the moral. This is improve the build the moral of the employees. Now, we take up the next function of management which is controlling. Controlling is the process of measuring current performance, evaluating it against, against some predetermined goal. and taking actions, so that the discrepancy from the goal is eliminated. Examples are working within budget, so budget is the goal and what you achieve is the actual expenses and the discrepancy is the variance, budget variance and then actions are taken maintaining standards, the quality standards, sticking to schedules are all examples of controlling. Now, in this slide we say that the functions of management are not a series of separate tasks that are performed independently, they together constitute an integrated and composite set of functions. Every manager has to do these functions, some functions relatively more and some less. Now, let us elaborate on this particular issue. In this context, before we elaborate on this issue, we talk about what is commonly known as the management hierarchy. Basically, every organization you will find a hierarchy in the management. Top management, middle level management and operating management. And although there is no sharp line of demarcation between any two management levels, but broadly in any organization 
we see that there are some people who do top level managerial activities and some do operating level management activities and some others in the middle they act as liaison between operating level managers and the top level managers. They translate the overall goals and objectives set by the top managers to individual plans and then put them to the operating managers for meeting those plans or meeting those goals. So, these are the functions of middle level managers. So, every organization has a hierarchical management structure defining a structure of authority relationships and a hierarchical grouping of functions into three types the top level management, the middle level management and the operating level management and this looks like a pyramid such as this. So, this is called a management pyramid that shows and here we have drawn th two lines dividing this into three areas. Here is the top level management, the middle level management and the operating level management. Now, the base here is wide because there are large number of persons who are operating level managers and here it is less number of persons who are in the top level management and the number of middle level management people are in between the two extremes. So, this therefore, looks like a triangle or a pyramid usually called a management pyramid. Now, we can discuss about the different types of jobs that the top level or activities that the top level management do or does and the operating level management does and where the middle management personnel are placed. Now, on this side we have given an arrow with regard to these objective or criteria and on this side we have put a downward arrow with respect to these criteria. What does this mean? It means that the top level management is more concerned with the sustainability and growth of the organization. They are planning content, their activities have a very high degree of planning content. They usually think long term and deal with external environment, the government, the customers, the financial institutions, the competitors both national and multinational new products that are coming, legal environment of the country, environmental features these are all external and it is the duty of the top level management to understand the implications of these external forces and then think how to mitigate such external adverse external influences. Also at the same time the top level managers should also take into consideration opportunities that come in the external environment. External environment gives large amount of opportunities. The customer taste, customer requirements may change and this could be an opportunity. A country with rising income gives rise to opportunities of various types and the organization 
must open its eyes, understand that it can take advantage of such opportunities in the environment. And it is the top level managers who have the duty to plan ahead to understand the opportunities and threats from the environment and plan ahead. They also therefore, they write vision, long term goals and make strategic decisions how to not only sustain, but also grow. So, this is the work of top level management. Now, the operating level managers, they mostly are concerned with implementation of the plans. Their planning horizon time is short. They may be pl planning only for a day or maximum for a week. They are concerned mostly with internal data and that are originating from within the organization. Employee data, machine data, production data, quality data, cost data, all these are internally generated. Therefore, the operating managers are well placed to be able to apply many principles of scientific management. No wonder therefore, that Taylor's idea of scientific management was first applied to soft floor. He was at that time an operating manager. Today after all these years, the management as a science flourishes also at the soft floor level. However, as we shall see, it has also penetrated into the activities of middle and top level management, many times with success. So, operating level management is concerned most with implementation and confirm implementation of the plans and conformance to objectives. Now, where does this middle level management personnel come and what are their activities? Their task is to convert the strategic plans made by the top level management into short duration plans, schedules and controls they have to design. The quality control, inventory control, budgetary control, control functions are basically designed by the middle level management and passed on as short term goals to the operating level managers, who then implement those schedules, those controls, exercise those controls to achieve the goals set for them. So, operating level managers plan for one day to one week, middle level managers plan for one month to one year and top level management plans for one to five years. Therefore, understanding the management pyramid is very crucial in understanding how the principles of management can be applied at different levels of management. This are written down here in more detail. Top level managers make long range policies and plans that are generally concerned with environmental factors such as competition from other companies, new technologies, new products, new government laws, maintaining stability and growth of the company. Middle level managers are concerned with resource procurement and utilization that translate the plans into schedules 
and attempt to achieve them in the most effective ways. And operating managers are actually first line supervisors who make the schedules work. While the operating managers are large in number, the middle level managers are less in number and the top level managers are the least in number. Now, earlier I said that it is not that a particular management person will carry out only planning and no execution or that only execution and no planning. Every manager has to carry out a bit of planning, a bit of organizing, a bit of directing and a bit of controlling. He may be doing more, a top manager may be doing more plan and less control and a operating and an operating manager might be concerned with less plan but more control, but nevertheless he makes a plan. This is shown in this diagram. This contains the usual management hierarchy that we had been talking and these are the four generic functions of management. Here we are saying at the operating level the planning content is less, the top level managers planning content is more. And organizing function is more at the top level management, less at the operating level management. Directing function is more at the operating level management, very high, less at the top level management. Control function, it is shown to be high at the top level management. I would say that controls are also needed at the operating level management. So, this line could probably be not so, it could be. something like this. Meaning that control aspects are quite considerable at the operating level, although it can be high at the top level management. Although some authors feel that control aspects are even higher at the operating level management and little low at the top level management, but the fact remains that Control, controls are exercised also by the top level management in different forms. Say for example, the budgetary control is a function of a top level management or let us say fraction defectives, percent defects although it is a operating level management's function, but control could be exercised by the top level management. It is a question of to what extent the top level management has delegated its authority to the middle level or to the operating level managers. The less it is delegated, the more is the centralization. The more it is delegated, more is the decentralization. Normally, when authorities are delegated downwards to a larger extent, it results in decentralization and it gives a confidence to the operating level managers. But at the same time, as we shall study later, authority and responsibility must go side by side. A manager must not be given more authority than required to discharge his responsibilities. At the same time, the requisite amount of authority must be passed on to a manager if he or she 
has to discharge his responsibilities properly. So, these are certain things that we shall be discussing in detail when we talk about organizing later. Thus, a manager carries out all managerial functions, whatever may be his or her level of management, only the amount of time spent for each function may vary. Whereas, the directive function takes a major fraction of an operating manager's time, the other managerial functions take a greater share of a top level and a middle level manager. Now, we will also talk about just as we know that there are certain technical skills that are required to carry out technical functions. Similarly, there are some management skills required to carry out management activities. Broadly, these management skills are divided into three types. One, certain technical skills, two, the human skills and three, the conceptual and design skills. So, managerial functions also require certain technical skills. What do we mean by technical skills? They refer to specific tools and techniques to carry out specific managerial tasks. For example, we already know financial manager would require the knowledge of accounting, costing and engineering economics. Similarly, as we shall see later, marketing managers would require the tools of market research and forecasting. Quality control manager requires the techniques of statistical quality control. Therefore, these tools and techniques constitute the technical skills. So, specific tools and techniques such as this are required by the corresponding managers to discharge their responsibilities. These skills however, are more important at the operating level than at higher management levels. So, technical skills constitute or are more significant, more important at the operating level of management and certain other types of skill are more important at the middle or top level management. Now, we look at the human skill. We already know from the work of Elton Mayo that employees constitute one of the most significant resources of an organization. Unless, <coughs> unless the employees are highly motivated, they cannot discharge their responsibilities well. The organization cannot meet its desired goal. For this reason, human skills are very important. It refers to the ability of a manager to work and to motivate others to work in a team in a coordinated manner to achieve a common purpose. As we know, management is a group activity to do and get things done is management. So, this requires motivating members of the group to work in unison to achieve the desired objective. This requires to motivate them, to coordinate between them, to find out their problems, to solve their problems, 
and these require skills that are not technical, that are human in form. These are human skills, how to behave with people, how to talk with people, how to pass on information, how to collect their opinion, how to make them feel that they are an important resource in the organization, how to make or how to design the system such that they do not feel ignored or neglected. These requires human skill or behavioral skill. So, this is the second type of skill. The third is the conceptual and design skills. They refer to the ability to take a holistic picture of a problem, understand cause effect relationships among the dominant elements of the problem, solve the problem and prevent the occurrence of such a problem in the future. So, this is concerned with as it says understanding or taking the holistic picture, a systems view of the problem, going to root causes of the problem, not only solve the problem, but also prevent the occurrence of similar problem. This talks about not only conceptual skills such as the systems view, but also design skills. It means design your organization, design employee employee relationships, design the organization structure and understand design the product that means find out the customer requirements and decide what product to make, what features, what unique features a product or a service should have so that it excels in the market, these are top level management functions. How to design the supply chain, how to incorporate the quality features in the production. So, these are and of course, as I said designing the organization is the top level management function, these are design skills, operational skills and usually is the top level management function. Now, we can draw a picture such as this to show the extent of different forms of skill that the different management level personnel should have. Top level management is concerned with more conceptual and design skill, but also human skill. Human skill is required almost in the same fraction at every level. The middle level management uh, rather the op operating level management should have more technical skill and less conceptual and design skill. Top level management is concerned with more conceptual and design skill and human skill is required by all levels of management. Now, we talk about managerial roles. Here, the managers performed 10 basic roles that can be grouped into 3 sets of role. Ten roles that are grouped into three sets, interpersonal roles, informational roles, decision roles. These roles describe what managers actually do. Let us see this interpersonal role. It can be figurehead role or a leadership role or a liaison role. A figurehead role is on the strength of a position occupied, the manager signs documents, receives visitors and inaugurates ceremonies. 
just because he or C is the figurehead. So, this is one role. The second role is leadership role. As I said by leadership, the ability to influence subordinates. A manager influences his subordinates to achieve set goals by encouraging them by resorting to various systems of rewards and punishments. So, various ways by which motivation is to be uh, the subordinates can be motivated could be through systems of rewards and punishment that is a leadership role. So, designing those systems and being able to influence the subordinate is the leadership role every manager should display. Liaso, a manager communicates with the outside world, the suppliers, the contractors, the government and the society that is the Liaso role. Informational roles, there are three basic roles here. Recipient role means the managers receive information about the organization and monitor its performance. Disseminator role, managers pass on information both upwards to the superiors and downward to the subordinates. The spokesperson role, managers speak to the superiors on behalf of the subordinates, to the subordinates on behalf of the superiors and to outside parties on behalf of the organization. So, this is how the manager communicates with the support with the superiors, subordinates, superiors and to the outside world. And finally, the set of decision roles, there are four of them, entrepreneurial role, disturbance handler role, resource allocator role and negotiator role. Managers initiate change, innovate new ideas, new ways of solving problems and of improving organizational performance. That is the role of an entrepreneur, design something new. Disturbance handler role is managers maintain stability by reacting to disturbances such as machine breakdown which is at the operating level, loss of market share is a top level function or manpower people leaving the organization it is a top and middle level management's concern. So, this is a disturbance to the organization and how to handle it is a role that the manager also functions discharges. The resource allocator role, managers acquire and allocate human, human capital and financial resources to achieve a set goal. And finally, the negotiator role, whenever conflicting goals are encountered, managers reach compromising solutions by negotiating with different groups of persons such as unions, suppliers, customers and subordinates. This is to highlight the different roles in which the managers function or different roles that a manager assumes at times he passes on information, at times he takes the leadership role, at times he designs new ways of doing things at times he negotiates with the outside world with his own colleagues and take decisions and at times he allocate resources for its full utilization to maximize productivity. So, different roles a manager assumes he must have different skills to discharge his responsibilities. Now, we will talk about six M's 
normally traditionally we we talk of we used to talk of three aims and then we added the fourth aim and then we added the fifth aim and now we have added the sixth aim what they are particularly in a manufacturing organization these three are important man machine and material the role of man is already highlighted to a great extent the human resource material is required to produce a product and machines are required to transform these materials raw materials into finished product and one needs money to be able to acquire these things and to transform the material into finished products and finally the management who coordinates plans for organizes coordinates and control these resources so that the organization achieves its objective of producing goods and services and profitably sells them to the customers to these aims five aims we have now added another aim emphasizing that information is power and therefore a proper management information system the it services are also important so friends today we discussed about the functions of management in particular we said that planning organizing directing and controlling are the four generic functions of management different other authors have understood or have considered staffing as a function separate generic function leading as a separate generic gener, uh, generic function but in general we can say that these four functions are quite generic planning organizing directing and controlling and then we said that there is a management hierarchy in every organization and that every manager is concerned with certain amount of each of the generic functions some more some less then we said that there are certain skills required for every manager human skills technical skills and design skills or conceptual skills that also vary from management level operating management level to top management level then we said that there are 10 different generic roles that a manager assumes in in course of his work his or her work in an organization and finally we said that there are six aims man machine material money and management and finally management information system or the role of information so we end our lecture here but in the subsequent one or two lectures we shall delve more into each functional each generic function of management thank you very much